Wait. future today i'm just kind of taking it slow relaxing a little bit today's the first day i have had off in quite some time i have nothing to do other than what i want to do and that is rare bliss <laughs> i have my window open a bit i made myself some tea i have some pretzels we're just gonna have a good time reading today we are reading spring fire if you have not heard me talk about this book this is the first published lesbian paperback from 1952. When it came out, it sold 1.5 million copies. So it, that makes it very likely the first lesbian story in the hands of the average Joe. And I think that's incredible. And I want to know what they read. <laughs> I want to know what they know. <laughs> My expectations are little to none, to be quite frank. What I do know about the censors at the time was that you could write about homosexuality, but by the end of the story, the characters had to have learned their lesson. Pretty much that prevented any happy endings for homosexuals. So Mary Jane Meeker was writing under the pseudonym of Vin Packer, um, who actually, she only just died in 2022 at the age of 95, which is what a full long life. What an incredible life. Um, but I feel like it's safe to assume that the ending written here is an ending she was forced to write. It's not the ending she would have written. Maybe there's a palpable moment where you can tell that her, her heart's not in it anymore. Like she just kind of throws the ending out that she's required to throw out. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she gave it her all, but I'm kind of expecting there to be a moment where maybe you can kind of taste some disdain. That's kind of my only expectation going into this book. And my plan is to sit here and just take it all in in one sitting. It's barely a hundred pages. Yeah, I'm not gonna read anything on there, but it's 110 pages. Um, piece of cake. I, I enjoy taking my time reading. I'm not, I'm not a quick reader, so I'm curious to know how long this is going to take me, 110 pages. It'll probably be 1.30 by the time I start. Let's jump in. Let's, let's get into this. I'm gonna try to keep this spoiler free, but I'm probably gonna talk really broadly about stuff that's going on. So we were introduced to our main character, Susan Mitchell. She likes to go by Mitch. It's written kind of third person omniscient. So it's not really all Mitch's point of view. We're kind of bouncing around point of views. So Mitch is currently sorority shopping and the sorority girls are talking about Mitch before she shows up and none of them really like her. Lita, this girl, Lita in particular is, has been really mean. So Mitch is described as not pretty. So the sorority girls are being kind of really rude and like we don't really want to have <laughs> this hickey in our sorority. But then this girl, Marsha, was like, well, let's give her a chance. Her, her daddy has a lot of money, right? So that's the whole reason the sorority is even considering taking her in. So I was trying to pin down who her love interest is going to be and I assumed it was gonna be Marsha because she said the nice thing about her, right? But we just had our meet cute, the most awkward, awful meet cute <laughs> between Mitch and the love interest, who apparently is going to be the mean girl, Lita. And I don't know how to feel about that. I'm kind of upset. I really don't want to hate this. I'm, I'm keeping my mind open. I'm not even to the end of chapter one. 
I just really didn't want her to have it for the, for the mean girl. I'm trying to understand where Lita's head is at and where she's coming from. At the moment, she still feels kind of cold shoulder, standoffish, maybe because she has feelings for Mitch. But Mitch definitely has it for Lita. <laughs> I don't know how based off the book this cover is. I think that might be Mitch and that might be Lita, but I honestly, I don't know. So, so far, this has been incredibly descriptive. Borderline to a boring degree. I feel like <laughs> I'm going to be learning a lot about 50s college life. I am nervous. I'm terrified that this girl, Lita, is going to be incredibly rude to Mitch. And Mitch is just gonna let her walk all over her. So, we'll see. One of the main guys named Bud just pulled an awful dirty trick on Mitch and Mitch let him have it. Mitch <laughs> just hit him with a vase. There's drama! I've suddenly become incredibly invested. <laughs> I do not feel well. I am nervous. This girl Mitch, she's a little thick. She's, <laughs> she's a little stupid <laughs> she's getting herself she is walking into traps left and right she's getting herself into such awful trouble Ugh. i'm stressed <laughs> i think this was possibly the least relaxing book i could have read today <laughs> this is disturbing everyone is fucked up oh my gosh I don't want to spoil things. I'm not going to tell you what I just read, but... <laughs> I can't... <laughs> it's like a car accident. I can't... I can't stop. Wait. <laughs> Keep going, wait. What the fuck? I am riddled with confusion and whiplash. I'm not, what is? Was every sorority girl's life this effing dramatic? We went from throwing vases over people's heads to getting blacklisted to giving massages and feeling each other up. What is... I'm not even done with the third chapter. I'm 30 pages in and I'm whiplashed. I've... If you enjoy drama, We are moving right along. We just had our first little flicker of, uh... Let me, let me... Let me read some things to you. What is happening? They were just fighting and now they're crawling into bed together. <laughs> Mitch, she said, I like you. From the first day, you knew that. Do you hear me, Mitch? I hear you, Lita. You looked at me while I was standing by the piano. I'll never forget that look. I thought you were beautiful. Now what do you think of me, Mitch? Honestly. I've never known anyone like you. I've had friends before, you know, school friends. You're different, though. Do you, do you like to touch me? Yes. I used to be timid. 
I used to be timid about touching people. I don't know. When the kids asked me to scratch their backs, I used to dislike it. Now, I like it with you. The rain sounds good, doesn't it? Yes. Want to crawl in with me? Mitch didn't answer. She pulled the covers back <laughs> and lay beside Lita. Do you like to touch me? Yes. Do you like me, Mitch? Yes. <laughs> the rain sounds good, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> I am distraught. I am invested. I am entertained. Blood is being nice to Mitch. And I don't trust him. I'm stressed. This boy. This is not PG. Ugh. Okay. Mixed emotions. Bud. Terrible, awful bud. But now Lita is being very nice to Mitch. They're being friends. But I hate, I hate this. I hate it so much. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about anything. <laughs> but Lita and Mitch just had a, a very sweet, tender moment. I'm 41 pages in, and nothing has really happened between them. The energy is definitely there. Listen, kid, I never felt about a person the way I feel about you. You're different. I want to keep the damn world away from you so it won't kick you in the teeth the way it has me. You're special, Mitch, and as long as I'm alive, you're going to be okay. I mean it. Lita has grown on me. That's what we came here for. That's what we're here for. Thank you. I needed that. Page 43, thank you. Oh, you guys get to see me all in a tizzy. <laughs> they're so cute. Oh, now they're holding hands under the tablecloth. But where Jake was plastic, Mitch, this feeling for Mitch was wood. It was wood and it could do everything wood should do. Splinter, crack, and burn. Now it burned deep near her stomach, and there was never that with Jake. That's been my favorite sentence so far. That has been, that spoke to me. What? There are so many left turns in this book. Hot and cold. What? 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 <laughs> I'm stressed. I'm so stressed. I am stressed. I'm s I'm I'm so stressed. Okay. I'm officially halfway through. I'm on page 53. There's so much happening. There's so many twists and turns. There's so many highs and lows. I have to say I'm enjoying it so much more than I thought I was going to. For some reason, I really kind of expected to be a little bored. I am the furthest thing from bored. I'm stressed. I'm so stressed. Everything is going to fall apart. Everything is going to burn. <laughs> it hasn't gotten super spicy. Uh, I don't think that means it won't get super spicy. I feel like there is a sex scene coming. It just hasn't happened. They have <laughs> been together, um, but not super explicitly. And Mitch is like the most innocent, pure little thing and then Lita is the one feeling guilty about it all. I'm terrified Lita is going to be... trouble. I'm stressed. I'm so 
I'm stressed. I am so nervous. I'm honestly, I'm impressed with how, with how devoted I feel <laughs> to this story now. I'm so, I have to, I have to finish it. I don't think I'll be able to sleep if I don't finish it. Because I'm stressed. Have I said that? Have I said that? I'm, st I'm... Lita says, You better get to know men too, kid. I mean that. There are a lot of people who love both and no one gives a damn. And then they just say you're oversexed and they don't care. But they start getting interested when you stick to one sex, like you've been doing, Mitch. I couldn't love you if you were a lesbian. That to me, that sentence, that feels a little sus. I have an awful feeling that the last half of this book is going to be disastrous. Damn it. Okay. Starting chapter seven. Still stressed. She had found the explanation for the word in a thick volume on the psychology shelf in the library. A lesbian was abnormal, a female who could not have satisfactory relations with a male, but only with another female, and Mitch knew it had been that way. Once again, this feels like the work of the 50s. <laughs> have I told you how stressed I am? <laughs> oh, I do not have high hopes for the latter half. She felt that Jan knew she was abnormal. I'm terrified. <laughs> I think she has now become determined not to be a lesbian. So she's taking this. I'm stressed. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. Uh. I'm stressed. 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 Everything is about to blow up. Oh no! My heart is racing. Oh, this is a nightmare. This is an absolute nightmare. I can't. I can't say anything. I can't spoil it. I just finished chapter eight. Page 80 out of 110. Everything is hitting the fan. I'm stressed. <laughs> Today was supposed to be relaxing. I was supposed to have a self-care day. Not this bullshit. Oh my gosh. It's, it has started to get dark on me. It is 6.44. It's been about five hours. I did have to take a pause and take my dog out and eat some dinner. I'm gonna have to move you. It's getting dark. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Homosexuality just leaves a horrid taste. This girl hates herself. A slow self-disgust chewed at her and called her coward. Like she's dreaming and imagining this life together with Lita and she can't enjoy it because she's disgusted with herself. It's, it's offensive. I'm offended. <laughs> it's just awful. Page 88, chapter nine. No, I'm on chapter 10. <laughs> there is no ending this well. This is the most emotional turmoil I've ever been in over a book. Have I, have I, have I said I'm stressed? Have I mentioned that? <laughs> I can't. I can't! 
Oh. Wait. <laughs> I don't know how to talk about what is happening because it would just spoil everything, but so much is happening. And it's not okay, none of it is okay. <laughs> I'm never not gonna be stressed. I'm never gonna know what not stressed feels like. Oh no, disaster, disaster. What the fuck? <laughs> how, how are things still getting worse? Okay, spoiler warning. Big ass spoiler warning. Cause I have to talk about it. For fuck's sake. What? Fucking Lita. Oh, okay. Mitch wrote Lita a letter saying that she was going to leave the sorority. She couldn't stand to be around Lita anymore because she was trying to fix herself. She was trying to help herself, right? And not give in to that temptation. So she was gonna leave the sorority. She, Mitch wrote this whole long letter and Lita was supposed to take care of it. But Lita and Mitch got caught together by the other sorority girls and Lita went to talk to them and showed them the letter and got them to believe that Mitch had attacked Lita, that Lita wasn't gay at all. It was all Mitch. Uh, and now, Mitch is in trouble, she's with the Dean, the Dean is believing her, but the Dean is now telling Lita that she wants to talk to her. But Lita went and got her ass drunk with her boyfriend. At like 11 a.m., they're plastered in a diner, and the sorority girls come and get her because the Dean wants to talk to her, and Lita, for some reason, they let Lita drive the car back, and Lita just crashed the car, and her face went through the fucking windshield, and now she's bleeding all over the place. This is going to end so badly for both of them. Now, Lita is like half conscious, and still drunk, bleeding her ass off, and she's mumbling on about Mitch, and the sorority girls are listening, so now they know Mitch is fucking lesbian too. This is like, this is some soap opera of a book. And the twists keep coming. I have to say, there were several times I thought this I had this storyline pegged. There were several times I thought I could tell where the story was going. And all of those times I have been slapped upside the face. Page 97, chapter 11. Oh, lordy. What is this? Mary Jane Meeker. Oh, I'm not gonna like this. There are 13 pages left, and I am not gonna like one of them. Oh. You know what I am? You know what I am? Say it. There was no doubt in her mind that the Mitchell girl would be normal again. Oh my gosh. What the fuck? What? Oh my gosh. It's so twisted. It's so backwards. It's so backwards. That last sentence. It's, wow, 1952, you were brutal. There were moments in the first half that were so loving and so delicate and felt so, like I related to it, felt true of myself. Moments when they're thinking of one another, talking to one another. It's so sweet and genuine. And then the last half of this book, I kind of understand now how this came to be the first mainstream lesbian novel. It's because it absolutely tears it down. That's why it was allowed to be circulated like that. I'm not okay, I'm very unwell.
I'm giving a spoiler warning. I ha I have to talk about it in depth, I think. This was this was emotional. I I told you how Lita completely betrayed Mitch. So the first half of this book, Mitch is falling head over heels for Lita and it feels so sweet and genuine. Like they got me to believe Mitch was absolutely in love with this girl. I still believe that Mitch had it for this girl. She would go on dates with guys, didn't like the guys, couldn't sleep with the guys, but she loved sleeping with Lita. She loved Lita. Oh. And then of course in the last half of the book, Lita betrays Mitch, gets Mitch in trouble. Then of course Lita is in the car accident and Lita outs herself. Now Lita is in the hospital the doctor is completely placing all of the blame on Lita, saying Lita was the one who corrupted Mitch, got Mitch to love her. Lita is the one who is mentally sick. The whole time, the whole half of this book, Lita feels like the one that could be straight, right? And Mitch is the very gay one. That's how it feels in the first half of the book. And now, in the latter half, they're trying to get you to believe that Lita was the one who made it all happen. Lita got Mitch to fall in love with her, which we as the audience know that that is not true. But that's what the doctors believe. That's what the doctors have gotten everyone else to believe, including Mitch. At the very end, oh, the last sentence, Mitch got off scot-free, not so much as a slap on the wrist. She's not getting expelled. In fact, she has so much sympathy. Oh my gosh, Lita did this to you. Lita made you a lesbian. Oh no. She was sick when she loved you, Dr. Peters had said, and you caught some of that sickness. And the last, oh, the last sentence. Mitch is walking away from the hospital after seeing the doctors, and the doctor's like, I hope you have a wonderful day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mitch is walking away, talking about how peaceful it is. I wish Lita could know this piece. Because it was true what she had told Lita yesterday. She didn't hate her. She didn't hate her at all. And she knew then that she had never really loved her. Yes, she did. Mitch was head over heels for this girl. And Lita, meanwhile, Lita's having a nervous breakdown. She's losing her mind. Literally, we leave the sorority girls. They're getting the news that Lita is going to be put into a freaking asylum. And they're kind of laughing about, oh my gosh, Lita in an asylum. Mm. The first half of this book, I was having a great time. I was going to recommend it. It was dramatic. It was emotional. I was in it. It still was those things, right? All the way through. It was dramatic and it was emotional, but... I just really started to despise it and hate it. And I could feel, I could feel the homosexual fear <laughs> of the 1950s society and the censors. I have to go and do a bunch of research on Mary Jane Meeker because I could have told you before I started reading this that Mary Jane Meeker is probably going to be a lesbian if she wrote this book. Now I'm not so sure. This broke my heart. Not so much, I mean, it wasn't really the writing and the story that broke my heart. What breaks it is thinking of the time that this came out. I hate that it was a time where this was the lesbian reality. This was a journey. This, I will say that, this was Wow, going on 820. It's been about seven hours since I started today. I'm trying to decide who would I recommend this to? Because I feel like this would be extremely triggering for a lot of the queer community. <laughs> it has, it's, it's triggered me a little bit. <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> but it is, it's a piece of history. I'm, oh. I think there were scenes in here and moments in here that were important for lesbian literature. 
that were big, big steps? No way! Mary Jane Meeker had a two-year romance with Patricia Highsmith. Patricia Highsmith wrote The Price of Salt, which became the movie Carol. That was the first lesbian book, that's the first lesbian story I ever got my hands on. So, that's wild! So Mary Jane Meeker was out, and she was involved in gay rights in New York. So this book to her, it must have felt like a triumph. It must have felt like a step in the right direction as far as gay rights in literature goes. It doesn't feel like that from this end of things, but maybe, maybe it did back then. This almost feels more homophobic than it needed to be to get past the censors. Obviously, if Patricia Highsmith was writing The Price of Salt the same year, this is way, this is, this is homophobia compared to The Price of Salt. The Price of Salt has a happy ending. The Price of Salt is for the gays. <laughs> this feels like it was for society. Maker is quoted saying in regards to her unhappy ending, She's quoted saying that she laughed about it. You don't have any vision of your book being discussed in the future. She was just delighted to get her first book published. And she said if, if that was the rule, she was willing to follow it. She laughed about this ending. I'm not laughing, Mary Jane Maker. I'm not laughing. <laughs> So as we became more open, yes, we had these cautionary blurbs that our publishers wrote, but still it was more important to have us there. So I think then for Mary Jane Meeker, it sounds like it was more important to have a lesbian themed book, regardless of how it ended or what it really ended up saying about lesbianism. It was just more important to have a lesbian story in general. I guess, I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I can understand what writing something like this in the 50s would have been like. Maybe this was extremely liberating. I don't know. If you are out there looking for an entertaining drama full of college life, college girls, college relationships, this is this was great. If you are out there in the world seeking those happy gay endings, this is stays far away from this. As little old gay me, <laughs> this was rather miserable. <laughs> I'm trying to just be able to see through what she wrote because of society. But it's hard because this it's riddled with it. It's just infested with 1950s homophobia. This was extremely entertaining. I was not bored at all today. I spent seven hours going on this journey today and I don't regret it. I really hope you enjoyed watching me sweat. <laughs> what a way to spend my day off. As far as like maturity goes, um, this wasn't super spicy. I mean, there were sex scenes, yes, but, but they were pretty they were pretty mild. They were pretty, pretty timid. It was, I am happy that I read it. I'm happy to have uh, that little insight into the history of lesbian literature. If you have read this or if you read it after watching this, I would love to know your thoughts. I would love to talk. I would love to talk to somebody about this. So until that happens, until that day, I'm gonna go have a gay old time because I really need one right now. I just really wanna get in front of thousands of people and kiss a girl because, because I can. That's how freaking in need of gayness I am right now, my water.